Hello class, this is lab 8 lecture, uh, acid and base titration, where you'll be titrating acetic acid with a base. So hopefully this is a review from your lecture. We have a molarity, which is concentration, a way to measure the number of moles per liter. Perhaps you've talked in your class about other methods such as parts per million, perhaps a volume over volume, uh, percentages as well, grams over volume. Um, but the one we'll focus on is molarity, big M. So I just stated it's uh, moles over volume. Uh, the equation is M, big M, sorry, big M is equal to moles over volume and you know the volume should be in units of liters so here we have a, a nice example 3.5 moles of sodium chloride dissolved in water to prepare a 2 point liter solution you have two of the variables moles and volume 3.5 divided by 2 liters is 1.75 uh, molar of course if the question was to the correct number of significant figures uh, the answer would be 1.8 molar. So this is a roadmap uh, I like to introduce my lecture classes. You've seen this before in some fashion. We have moles in the middle. Uh, if we want to have the mass, we multiply by molar mass. If we want to have the number of moles or mo sorry atoms or molecules, we multiply by Avogadro's number. And the newest part is if we want to have the molarity and we know the moles, we would divide by the volume. So we'll come back to this in a second. So if I gave you the molarity, you would in theory be able to find the number of atoms. If I gave you the molarity, you would also be able to find the number, the mass. So you'd first multiply by the volume and then multiply by the molar mass to find the mass. This example, what is the molarity of a 0 0.250 liter solution that contains 56 grams of barium chloride? So if, I, if you remember the previous chart, you start in the top left corner, which has the mass, and then you get it down to moles by dividing by the molar mass of BaCl2. How do you guys find the molar mass of a compound? What do you need in front of you? That's right, you need a periodic table. So 56 grams divided by uh, 207.9 will give you 0 0.0269 moles of BaCl2. That's not the final answer. The question is asking, what is the molarity? So if you have the moles, let's write the equation again. If you have the moles, and you have the volume, You should be able to find the molarity. Okay. And so that we do this here, 0.269 divided by 0 0.250 gives us the molarity, 1.07 molar. You can just pause the video and try on your own. The question is how many molecules of NaCl are there in the solution whose concentration is 2.2 molar and volume 0 0.005 liters. So First thing is we always want to try to find the number of moles. So in this example, we have the molarity, we have the volume, we should be able to find moles. So to do that, we have to multiply the two numbers, 2.2 molar, which is the same thing as moles per liter. And we multiply it by the volume, 0 0.00 five liters, the units will cancel. You're left with moles, so let me give it a try. 2.2 times 0 0.005 gives us 0 0.01, 0 0.11, 1, 1. And the unit will that of this will be moles. So we have moles. And they're asked you to find the molecules. So to go from moles to molecules, we have to multiply by Avogadro's number. 
6.02 times 10 to the 23. And that comes out to hopefully 6.62 times 10 to the 21. Let me double check. 0 0.02 times 10 to the 23 times 0 0.011. Yes, so that comes out to 6.62 times 10 to the 21. So again, the same uh, roadmap again. Reading the question, you have 2.5 molar of HCl are needed to completely react with 5.85 grams of calcium carbonate. So how many liters are needed? So I'll write out the steps. First, you have to find the moles of calcium carbonate. So you have the mass, if you want to find the moles, you divide by the molar mass of calcium carbonate, which I believe is 100 grams per mole. You need a periodic table for that. Once you have the moles, once you have the moles, you need to use the balance chemical equation to find the moles of HCl. So repeat, from step one, you'll have the moles of CaCO3, use the, the ratio in the balanced chemical equation to find the moles of HCl. So it's a two to one ratio. So you multiply by two, then you'll have the moles of HCl. Once you have the moles of HCl, you have the moles, you also have the molarity. You can find the volume of HCl. Okay, so I believe the next slide shows these steps. So begin the first step, Find the moles of CaCO3 using the periodic table. You have to divide by the molar mass. Step two, use the balanced chemical equation, a two to one ratio, a two to one ratio to find the moles of HCl. And once you have the moles of HCl, you divide by the molarity. Remember M equals to moles times or sorry, divided by liters. And if you want to find the moles, you have to multiply the molarity and the, sorry, you have to divide the moles by the uh, molarity to give you the volume. So I'll let you guys to try on your own. Um, I'll go through this uh, in a second. The first question here is 1.2 liters of 4.0 molar solution of potassium iodide mixed with 2.0 molar of lead 2 nitrate. What is the volume of lead 2 nitrate? Or sorry, what volume is necessary to react with uh, potassium iodide to react completely? So again, the first step is to try to find the moles. So let's do this. 1.2 liters times 1.2 liters times 4.4 um, molar is 4.8. The unit will be moles of Ki. So moles of Ki. We use the balanced chemical equation to find the moles of PbNO3. So we have to divide by 2. We can just say multiply by 1 over 2. And then you're left with 2.4 moles of lead, 2.4 moles of PbNO3-2. And once you have the moles of PbNO3-2, you can divide that by the, the molarity. So 2.4 divided by the molarity, 2.0. Um, so I'll write it down here. 2.4 divided by 2 molar will give us a volume of 1.2 uh, liters. The next question we have here, 
0 0.1, first we have to convert to liters, 0 0.22 liters of magnesium chloride. We want to find the moles again, so we multiply by the molarity, 0 0.1, 0 molar of MgCl2. This comes out to 0 0.1. 0.0022 moles of MgCl2 once we have the moles we use the ratio again of our balanced chemical equation so we have to multiply by 2 to get the moles of AgNO3 and that comes out to 0 0.0044. This is the moles of AgNO3 if we want to find the molarity. So if we have the moles, we also have the volume, convert that to liters, we take 0 0.0044 divided by the volume 0 0.015 liters and this comes out to one I'm sorry this comes out to 0 0.29 I think 3 molar um, but 0 0.29 molar should be suffice 0 0.29 So as I said, in this lab, you're going to titrate acetic acid, which will be your acid that will go in here. You're trying to find the concentration of this acid. That's the goal of the titration. In the burette, you're going to add a base, NaOH in this case, and then you're going to add the base into our acid until you observe a light pink permanent light pink color, which will tell us that the amount of acid equals to the amount of base. So again, the goal of the experiment is to find the concentration of our unknown acid. Sorry, the unknown acid is um, acetic acid, so you're trying to find its concentration. Um, before we get there, yeah, you're going to have to add a indicator, which will help us tell the color change at the end point as well. So before we get there, we want to show you a strong acid, in this case H2SO4, reacting with a strong base. So H2SO4 plus KOH. The two products you'll get are water and salt. So if you recall from the previous lecture, we have H2SO4, KOH, the water will form, so the OH, in this case the base, takes one of the protons to give us H2O. And the other product is K, SO, K and SO4 coming together. So if you remember the K plus SO4 to minus, they crisscross, and then you get K2 SO4. So we have, as I said, we have an indicator, which is phenolphthalein, which is a, tells you when it will tell you with the color change, when the amount of moles equals to the amount of acid. We also have the endpoint, as we said here. This is the theoretical part. It tells you the moles of the OH equals to the moles of H3O+. Plus. And you'll see a permanent pink color here, a light pink color as you see here in this photo. So a titration, you've seen this probably in your lecture with dilutions, but we use the same principle. We want to find the concentration of the acid. So we can call this CI or C initial, or we can call it uh, the concentration of the acid. You can also write it like this, concentration of the acid, volume of the acid equals to the concentration of the base times the volume of the base. 
So when we do a titration, we will know the concentration of NaOH in the burette. We will know how much volume of base we add so that the color changes to pink. And we know how much acid we added into the Erlenmeyer flask so we can determine the concentration of the acid. The volume should be in uh, liters because the concentration, if you remember, the units for concentration are moles per liter. So let's say you reach the end point and now you need to find the concentration of our acid. In this case, the unknown is HCl. So again, we use the same equation. You can use Ca, we will use Ca, Va equals to Cb concentration of the base times the volume of the base. You can also use MA, which is the molarity of the acid. Volume of the acid equals to the molarity of the base and the volume of the base. You can also use M1, V1 equals to M2, V2, which is analogous to the previous two equations. M1, M2, sorry, V2. So in this question, we have here 13 milliliters of base. So 0.013 liters of NaOH times the concentration 0 0.0010 molar of NaOH. What other information do we know? We know the volume of the acid, so two liters. And the last variable we don't know is the molarity of the acid. So if we do the math, 0 0.013 times 0 0.0010 divided by two liters, uh, we get a molarity of 6.5, sorry, 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 molar, the units. I'll give you guys a try for the next one. You have three of the numbers again, and you will be able to find the fourth variable. So I'll just set it up, 0 0.0. .0 one one eight five so i'll repeat 0 0.0185 liters that is the volume of the base times its molarity 0 0.0 0 1 and this will be equal to two liters. Actually, now I look back, I made a mistake, so let's retry this. So let's try this again. What is the molarity of HCl solution of 18.5 milliliters of 0 0.0225 molar NaOH are required to neutralize 10 mils of HCl? So we keep the base on the same side, 0 0.0185 liters. The concentration of the base is 0 0.225 molar equals to the volume of the acid, 0 0.010 liters and the variable we don't know is the molarity of the acid. So when we do the math, hopefully we isolate, to isolate the molarity of the acid, we get 0 0.416. And it's important to write out the equation because if the coefficient was not one to one, let's say that it was one to two, which is not, then you have to take that into account when you use this equation. So, However, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so the numbers can stay. You don't have to make any adjustments in terms of the coefficients. So 
that's um, the calculations for uh, lab eight. Um, and that's all for now.